and welcome to this video that I've called what is geographic information and how is it represented as geographic data using GIS. Okay, this is um, an introduction video where the purpose of it, which is to try and demystify what geographic data is, simply by looking at how it's defined and how it's represented as clear text format. So normally we use binary data formats to store data, but we get, there's lots of clear text formats where we can read what the data is in a normal text editor. So I'll try and explain what geodata is. It's not um, the purpose of this video to learn QGIS in any way. This is just give you some understanding of what geographic information is and how it's stored as geographic data. So let's um, start with a definition of what geographic data is. So the ISO standard 19109, which is the one that defines what geographic information is and so-called schema of applications, says that inf geographic data is information concerning phenomena implicitly or explicitly associated with a location relative to the Earth. So today I'll be talking about explicitly association. Um, if we um, look a bit close at this, and I've kept the definition up here, give it some colors, and a simple example. So a um, straightforward example would be where the phenomena, the one we talked about up here, is trees, and the information concerning the phenomena is just what type of tree it is, so the species, if you wish, and how large it is. These trees will furthermore be explicitly associated with a location through a point that represent represented as a single coordinate pair, so x or y coordinate pair giving a point and geographic lingo we'll be talking about a latitude or longitude or a northing or easting but basically just an x and a y coordinate so if we um, look at how this is done in QGIS I'll be talking about points lines and polygons so we call them features or vector data and I'll be talking about fields, that is things that are continuous. So features are often discrete things, a tree, a building, a road, a path, while fields often are something continuous. I'll be demonstrating um, some surface data, so high, how high things are above sea level. Um, so that's what I've been talking about. Please note that I'll be talking about representations. I won't be talking about visualization. So I won't be talking about map layers and things like that. And you see those things because I'm, I'm using QGIS and of course I have some visualization of it, but that's not the key here. The key is how data is represented. So don't try and see what I'm doing in QGIS and how things are shown. That's not the scope of this video. This video is just about how data is represented. So let's jump over into QGIS. Um, so here I have um, the campus and I'll be um, zooming in. So there's a health photograph um, and I'll be zooming in on, this is the building where my office is located. And there are some trees in this courtyard. So first thing I'll be doing is I'll be creating a data structure to store this information about these trees. Um, QGIS applies something that is called a geolational data model. So basically think of it as a cell spreadsheet where for each of these properties we talked about here, these information. So we will have the um, 
type of the tree and how large it is. Um, that will be the columns in our data set. So if I can do like that, um, I will uh, call it trees. Trees. I specify the geometry type. So this is going to be points. I specify a coordinate system. Um, that, again, complex thing. Talk about that in our videos. And here we have these fields. So that's the columns. So um, type, width, and each column has to have a data type. So in this case, it'll be a text. But I could also be a number or something like that. Let's leave that text and say, okay, I want to use one of these and I want to use a one called size. Size. That could be a number if it was how many meters it was, but I can't really estimate that. So I'll just use large, medium, small. Um, so again, leave that as a text thing. And now I've created the data structure. So I've said here to QGIS, I want to work with the geometry point. I want to, these X, Y coordinates have to use this coordinate system. And we have two pieces of information we want to register about each tree, namely its type and its size. So fine. Now I have. A element here I can work with. It has a little pencil indicating that I can now add a point. So this tree here is a rubina and it is large. And this tree here, here is a apple tree. And it is small. So um, I'm happy with my two small trees. Um, I have most of them over here. And um, I'll just press some save functions here. So I'll export these as a text format. And put them down here and call them trees. So I have these two. If I do, there's a little i tool I can use for information, and it will tell me will be a large apple, small. If I look where you saw in my farm folder. Huh? I have now these two or trees I just created a moment ago. And if I double click on one of these, it will open in my text editor. What we can see here is this is what we call a feature collection, so a collection of features, sometimes also named a feature class. And it has some properties, but one of them is called type. And this one is a type Rubina. This one here is a type apple. They have some geometries and these are some coordinates. So this is the number of meters north of the crater. Um, so that's how this coordinate system works. So basically a point is represented by properties that give the information elements. Remember from here, our type of tree and the size of it, these are these information concerning it, that is these properties, and then our geometry, which is a point, this point here, coordinates, that's this that is explicitly referencing to a point using a XY pair. So that's how point data is stored as geographic information.
if I go back and show you guys, I had some pre, um, so I have buildings. Oops, I didn't want to show that one. Go away for a moment. Buildings. So buildings, again here, if I use my eye tool on it, it will tell me that this has a name. This is building is a two. This building is a 10. This is building is 11. So they're polygons. Maybe I should start with my path down here. This here. Um, and uh, let's look at how they are represented as geographic data. So a path. Yeah, that was only one path. This line here. So we have again a feature collection. It has one feature. Um, which is called path. It has geometry, which is a line string, so a string. Um, and it has two coordinates. So they are the two ending coordinates. Let's bring this down to the next line. So you can see we have two coordinates representing the two ends of that line. So a line, while a point just represents information saying that the information is located at this coordinate a line says that this property this feature if you wish this path is defined from my first point to my next point so on a straight line there could be more points if we look at our buildings Again, here we have a feature class. We have three features. Buildings. One, two, three. Um, note that this one, so if I break there. So this one consists of one, two, three. Um, bring it one more line down. You can see it consists of five. That's because this last point and the first point are the same. So in a polygon or area, we have the feature that we are talking about is inscribed by a series of points. And in this case, it says that let's start with the points. And then when we end at the same point as we started, we have enclosed an area. So therefore, we have five points. The last one, which is building 02, which is this building here. Um, that's a bit strange, but if I break this one coordinates down, you will see that again it has first five points, and then it has a new series of five points, which is indicating that first we have the four points and then ending at the starting point, so five points. And then the next series is another five points that are inside that defines a hole in it. So all of these lines, bullet points, so our trees, our points, one coordinate, our path, a series of coordinates that define all the points that are between those two coordinates of the line and our polygons that are areas, rings of points. So in this case, five points because the first and the last is represented twice, if you wish. So defining the area by outlining it. If there's a strange one like this one, there's simply just two rings, an outer ring and an inner ring. That can be used to define a object with a hole in it. So extremely simple. There's no hocus pocus going around here. Simple, just some points, putting them together into strings and areas, defining lines, points, and polygons. Now let's say these are these strict entities we call them. Features a thing, one building. We have a phenomena that is continuous. 
he called them fields like there's like in um, gravity field or magnetic field, something that varies continuously. Um, I have a field data set here, which is elevation. Um, I've colored it so that the higher the elevation, the redder. So these are the lowest ones. If I zoom in on this, you can see just a lot of points. So this point um, in here, on top of the tree, approximately, is 42 meters above sea level. This point here and the grass in the courtyard is 30 meters. So this tree I caught large was 12 meters tall. So in this case, we have represented this continuum of elevation points as a series, a grid of points. So just a lot and lot of points. If I um, just for ease of it, I'll just move up into this. Corner. There's my corner. And look at so this one up here has an elevation of 31.1056. So if I look in my data set here, surprise, surprise, uh, this one is just a series of points, all those points we saw along. This point here has a elevation of 31.1056, so exactly the same number as we had here. So that's that point. Clearly, the, the, these points, they are in a regular grid, same distance, aligned. Um, so representing these um, coordinates each time is a bit silly. Therefore, often when we have these type of continuous data, it is practical to say, okay, it is represented on an ordinary grid. So represented as a grid here of points, but then don't represent those coordinates each time because we know that we're moving, in this case, 0.4 meters along each, between each point. So why represent this? And that is what we call a raster. So if we look at this data set here, I've been hiding down here, go with that one for a moment. We can see here it's uh, siblings also, same data. And again, if I look at the corner here, um, it will say that we have something approximately what I clicked at before, maybe I didn't exactly hit it. So this is all of these points represented as a picture, if you wish. We call it, normally we would call these pixels in the image. Here we call them grid cells. But same principle, each of them is really simply a point in this regular grid. And if we look at how this is represented as a text file, um, this one, we can see basically this says that this is a number of rows, columns, um, this is the corner coordinate, and the distance between each of them is these approximately 40 centimeters. And the first one is has a uh, elevation of 31.10, which is exactly the same as we had here. So that's that point. So if I zoom in here, activate my points. So this point there had an elevation of these 31.10, which is the same as this grid cell, which has, which is the same as what we see in here. So that's the next one and the next one. And if you look at the ASCII, this one, so 10, 31.10.5, 31.115, which is the next one, and so on. So raster is a efficient way of representing things that is continuous, so we might as well just represent it in a regular grid. Raster comes from German something about raking. So 
for the regular interval. So, and that's really efficient way of representing graphs that are this type of data where we have something going along in a regular system rather than re registering each individual coordinate. So, if we um, sum up on this, um, we have talked about points, lines, and polygons, grids, which are really just a raster, which is just a series of grids. So a point had this geometry, which had its coordinates, and then it has its properties, which was type. A line is just made of a list of points. A polygon, an area, is just made of a list of points where the first and last point are the same. So it creates a closed ring, which defines an area. If there's a, a ring inside that area, that would be O. And raster, which we use for these things that vary continuous, so that are not, these are typically buildings, as I said, fixed things, a, a tree, a path, a building. This is a continuous phenomena, so something like elevation, salinity, temperature, noise, something that varies continuously, we might as well represent them in a regular grid, because where, where do we have our measurements and so on? Much easier to work with in a regular grid. So it's just a regular grid of points that is efficiently stored in a big matrix where we know what is the distance between each cell in that matrix. That is a raster. So basically, I hope <laughs> that I have now demystified what is this geographic information. So this, it is just these things. It's stored normally. We can't read it, but I've chosen some formats that are human readable. So, but there's nothing different, you know, it's just stored in efficient way of bits and binary numbers that the computer can read faster than text. But still, this is the basics of it. So I hope you understood what is geographic data, how we can represent geographic information as geographic data and how these are stored as points, lines, and polygons and raster as data files that we can use in our GIS. So hope you like the video. Hope to see you in another video. Bye.